I got nightmares in my head, I fear Thoughts build up until I can't hear My mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper I got nightmares in my head, I fear The thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper Hello and a warm welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. Well, have you heard Boeing has just had to pay Alaska Air $160 million after that mid-air blowout? So, you know, if you think it wasn't a big deal, well, it's $160 million for that little oversight. Boeing has also told the Senate that it can't find the documentation showing how the door plug was removed, even though Boeing accepts that it's supposed to keep such records. There seems to be some confusion confusion on whose responsibility that old door plug was. Well, the answer is it's Boeing's. The plane was in Boeing's care, and it was up to Boeing to sort out those bolts, and they failed to do so and failed to keep documentation. Now, after culling several of the company's head honchos, Boeing's jetliner production has also fallen sharply, creating a ripple across the aerospace industry. According to Reuters, the FAA on Wednesday froze increases in production of the single aisle 737 MAX due to the issues, which have frustrated executives dependent on Boeing, one of only two major global plane manufacturers. According to the American Airlines CEO Robert Isom, Boeing needs to get their act together. It is hard enough running an airline. We need quality product, and that's what we demand. Now, the FAA's order means that Boeing can continue producing MAX jets at its current monthly rate, but it cannot increase that rate of production. It also offered no estimate of how long the limitation would last. The FAA didn't say how long that would be in place and did not specify the number of planes that Boeing can produce each month. If you think about it, this intervention by the FAA into production schedules is apparently unprecedented. But what is it really all about? Before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. If you're enjoying this analysis, please like, share, leave a comment. You can also hit the thanks button and let's get started. So what is really going on with Boeing? Well, two things. There is a shitload of money to be made in the airline industry these days, especially when there's a duopoly on the manufacturing side. Basically just two companies, Airbus and Boeing, building the world's airplanes. So that's the one side. The other side is that Airbus has gotten its nose and now its neck and shoulders ahead and Boeing a company who has had a legacy as the leader in this industry, it sort of wants to catch up. It wants to close the gap. It wants to, um, you know, get reduce that sort of lost ground and get back ahead. And yet it can't. Even worse, travelers are now starting to filter out Boeing, which in turn is leading to added scrutiny of certain airlines. According to the New York Times, quote, United Airlines now also faces scrutiny for a series of safety incidents, although thankfully many experts say the issues there do not appear to be systemic. The biggest danger of all may be understaffing in air traffic control and overstuffed runways, which lead to far too many near misses. Personally, and this is again from the New York Times, an opinion piece, I am not worried about flying, and other than cracking some ill-advised jokes, I've not changed my behavior. That's why I hadn't bothered to check whether I'd be flying on a Boeing Max or any type of Boeing plane until after I boarded. Now, how do you feel about that? I'm certainly, I'm going to be flying quite a little, quite a lot um, in the next month. And so I'm certainly aware, am I flying a Max or not? Now, going back to the article, the trajectory of Boeing as a corporation is another matter. It's going to take a lot more than a shuffle at the top to fix that company's problems. Well, I certainly agree with that. The article goes on to state that 
The fact that Boeing managed to cut as many corners as it did is testament to the layers and layers of checks, redundancies and training that have been built into the aviation industry. Aviation safety is so robust because we made it so. Now, that seems to be a weird way of saying that um, everything is fine because there are so many layers of safety, and yet there aren't because you're seeing several problems creeping through, which lead to even parts of the airplane falling off. And so we kind of living in a society, and it's quite interesting to take what is happening at Boeing and to sort of um, spread it out, to use it as an analogy into other areas of uh, that, that we are used to in terms of our lives right now, you know, contemporary li- life, contemporary culture. And so, you know, if you take what's going on, it's really about good, fast or cheap. Pick two of them. You can only have two. Now, the failure to not only put four bolts onto the door plug, but to document the process speaks of a production schedule where staff are essential or seem to be rushed off their feet. According to the New York, uh, New York Times, there are a lot of areas where things don't seem to be put together right in the first place. And that's quoting Joe Jacobson, an engineer and aviation safety expert who spent more than a decade at Boeing and more than 25 years at the FAA. I also think it's quite interesting. I've been reading some comments with people giving Boeing the benefit of the doubt, with making excuses for Boeing. I think that's quite interesting what that says about you and your attitudes to safety, your attitudes to standards, your attitudes to wanting speed above quality. And so Jacobson has said, The theme that he's noticed at Boeing is, in his words, shortcuts everywhere, not doing the job right. And so one can kind of ask at the same time, does it bother you if people are taking shortcuts, if you take your car to a mechanic and they use shortcuts? According to the article, such reports and interviews with aviation safety experts and more than two dozen current and former Boeing employees paint a worrying picture about a company long considered to be the pinnacle of American engineering. And so if this is happening to Boeing, couldn't it be happening elsewhere? They suggest that Boeing is struggling to improve quality years after two crashes of MAX 8 planes in 2018 and 2019. So if they're struggling to improve quality despite two crashes, then what is likely lying in front of us. I've got concerns that this is happening everywhere in a way. You know, we live in a culture where speed is king and safety increasingly secondary. What if we apply the speed is all culture to movie sets? Well, then you end up with the rust incident or the construction industry or to vehicle manufacturing or to the media to medical health and medicines to food and fitness and a lot of the problems that are in our society today are precisely because of this speed and profits over the interests of people i read a book recently where a filmmaker eventually became so fed up with his life in the netherlands he left the rat race to live in the desert of namibia under a tree that seems to show when people get what they want is, there, is that really what they want? I know in the true crime space that uh, you know it feels like everything is sped up as well. I've got to say, even for myself, I'm a far inferior storyteller on YouTube where it takes hours to cobble together a story, but zero time if one goes live. You know, and um, I must say... I think I was a much better storyteller when I was writing books, when they had to be coherent, where they had to have a very high standards applied to them. And it does make one wonder, what if there was more money in quality than in quantity? Because obviously, if you take YouTube, there's far more of an incentive to make quickly turned around YouTube videos that are less well researched and less coherent than writing a book. And I can tell you that there's certainly a creator out there 
who's doing a lot better than I have, despite me writing a hundred books. And the message is quite clear. We don't care that you wrote a hundred books. We care about getting this information very, very quickly. Do you care about accuracy? It's also interesting how you get two narratives from Boeing with the top brass giving themselves a clean bill of health while the employees say quality has deteriorated. It's strange because one would almost expect that narrative to be the opposite, the other way around. The top brass taking responsibility and the drone suggesting everything was fine when it really wasn't. Scott Kirby, the chief executive of United Airlines, told investors this month, referring to Boeing, they need to go slow to go fast. But he also added, I think they're doing that now. And yet there's a lot of rumors and talk going on. A worker currently at Boeing's 787 Dreamliner factory in North Charleston, that's in South Carolina, he described seeing several problems on planes being assembled. And according to the article, that included wires being rerouted or routed incorrectly, raising the risk that they could rub against one another, resulting in damage. Another quality manager in Washington State, he apparently left Boeing last year, said that workers assembling planes would sometimes try to install parts that had not been logged or inspected to save time by circumventing quality procedures. And that 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 kind of technique seems to be how those four bolts, A, were not documented, and B, weren't installed whatsoever. In one case, the employee said a worker sent parts from a receiving area straight to the factory floor before a required inspection. It's also interesting that one of Boeing's longest-serving and most vocal quality managers, John Bonnet was a quality manager, is now dead. It definitely feels like a Boeing way of dealing with problems. Shut them down rather than the more delicate process of ironing them out. What do you think? Thank you for listening and I'll see you guys next time.